Hello, Donnie Nolan here. I am going to teach you how to lower the tomatoes. It's very important. It needs to be done every week because the tomatoes will get too tall and they will either um, reach the grid that I have here um, and pulling them down from there might rip them. They also can grow beyond the clip and end up falling and collapsing and breaking. And also they'll waste energy by growing a bunch of suckers or side stems. So every week they have to be pruned. I usually remove the lower leaves as well. The vines have to be lowered and rotated and, um, and you have to add clips. So typically I start by removing some clips. So here are the clips here toward the bottom. This is not really needed anymore here. So I'm just going to um, push down on this tab and that loosens the clip and then I can remove it. So I need to get a whole collection of clips prepared in my bag in order to uh, be ready. So now I have scissors and my bag of clips. Usually I use a whole bag for one lowering. So now I'm gonna choose a spot. I've actually already done both edges. I can't reach this edge because the microgreen rack is in the way. So I actually started in that far corner and by making room here, so basically they're all gonna rotate. So if I make room on one end, then I have space to move them. You could see down here where the vines wrap around in a circle. So this bed's going this way and this other bed is going this way. So be sure that you're lowering them in the right direction. So now I'm going to um, climb up my ladder and I have my scissors and my bag. Always place your ladder as close as you can um, and also make sure the legs are stable so that you feel safe and confident up on the ladder. So here I am in the tomato canopy and you can see how this vine is uh, leaning over, right? And it's not clipped to its string. They are really wilted right now. We had a problem with the timer, but actually when they're wilted, it's the best time to lower them because they're less likely to snap and break. When they're fully turgid, meaning swollen, the opposite of wilting, then they're more easy to, they're more, they will more easily snap. And that's happened before when I lower them, if you have the bad angle, then they will snap. And I'll go into the importance of, of an angle and all that. Um, so basically when I clip, I'm always gonna clip first. Um, the clips have these little teeth on them. I'm gonna make sure that the teeth of the clip get into the string. And then I can push the tomato into the clip and then I'm gonna squeeze it uh, so that that triangle gets into that square and that closes the clip. Um, so I usually clip, you know, every few inches. You don't want to leave a large gap without a clip because they'll end up like curving and buckling out this way and that can cause a snapping potentially. I also have a sucker right here. So suckers are axillary, meaning along the sides, meristems, meaning stem cells are going to grow into a whole new stem. Um, but we call them suckers so we don't feel as bad about removing them. So I'm just going to pinch it and you can see how there's that stem remaining but that's the actual meristem or group of baby tiny leaves. They're usually very furry and that is basically a stem cell that can become a whole new branch. And if my tomatoes all have a bunch of side branches, then all their energy is going to get divided and they're going to become a tangly mess. By pruning off any potential side stems or suckers, each tomato is only one vine and that allows me to fit about 30 vines in this whole bed. So it's been working really well. Now at the very, very tippy top here, this is the apical meristem. We want this meristem. So see where these tiny leaves are forming? That's the meristem there. Here are some flower buds. And right here is actually a sucker. So I'm gonna pull down on that little piece. And that's the sucker that I just removed. And there's the axillary, sorry, the apical meristem. meristem. There's any other little uh, stem cells, I try to get rid of those. I am gonna place a clip, I'm grabbing a clip out of my bag here, as high up as I can. Um, especially toward the top, try to include any leaves, because otherwise the leaves will grow up and they'll push up against the clip if you clip above them. 
because this whole thing is going to get longer and taller as it grows. Um, try not to clip right over buds. Um, I might be able to get that a little bit higher, but that's, that's pretty good. And so that's the process. Here's another one. Oh, there's a little sucker. Really, really tiny. I'm going to go ahead and pinch that off. And that's where the expression, the expression, nip it in the bud came from. It's essentially a tiny little bud that would grow into a leaf and a flower and a whole new plant. And I'm nipping it so that it's not going to come back. And that works really well. By removing that meristematic tissue or stem cells, we're not going to get any side stem growth. So here's another example. We have the main vine here. We have a leaf. This is actually a tire tomato leaf. And here's the sucker. I'm gonna pinch it here. Um, when they're really big, it's a lot easier to use scissors, actually. You really don't want to um, potentially pull. Wow, that was hard while holding the camera. <laughs> you don't wanna pull and yank and end up pulling some of the skin along the vine. That's not good. So now I can't even add my clip because my pulley is in the way. So the next step, once you clip them, or if you need to before you're done clipping, is to produce some string in your pulley. So you just lift up and you pull down on your pulley. And then see this loose string, you want this to be taut. So I'm gonna try to wiggle my tomato vine from the lower part, wiggle and push down gently until that string is taut. Um, you might have to step down and pull the vine along the bottom as well if it's not working. Um, I'm just gonna get my last clip on this vine. And that's basically the whole process. I'm just going to continually, um, well actually, after you lower, you also want to move the clip. I forgot to mention that. That's how you are also rotating them. So I'm going to clip all these to their strings. Oop, there's another sucker, right? I'm going to remove all the suckers. I'm going to add the clips. I'm going to produce some string and lower them. And when I lower, I also need to rotate. It's really important to make sure that you're rotating while you lower. Um, because if you lower too much and you're not moving it, it could create an angle that's bad. And I can show you down here what that might look like. So ideally, you can see how all these vines are rotating and they make this nice obtuse angle up. It's nice and um, wide. What you do not want is a perpendicular angle. And I actually accidentally did this and destroyed one of the vines over here. Sorry, let me get to it. Right here. So this vine was at a very 90 degree angle and I pushed it down and, and then this connection snapped. And for a few days it was surviving just on the veins in this little piece here but then you can see how that got severed as well. So these fruit might ripen, but they have no connection to their root. Um, hopefully this stem, if it has any stem cells along the entire vine, will hopefully grow back, but it might not. So even a seasoned expert like me, I make a mistake, I push down while I'm lowering, thinking it's fine and it's not. Sometimes it's good to have a person with you at the bottom saying, hey, this angle is way too acute. It's very close to 90 degrees. Do not push down. Make sure you move the pulley over so that your vine's at a nice soft angle and not any hard angles. So that's really the trick um, for lowering. And then I also remove all the lower leaves. So I'm gonna use my scissors and cut all these lower leaves. This is an entire leaf here. Um, because I don't want any leaves that are close to the vines here along the bottom. It can trap humidity and cause mold issues. And we've lost entire vines from that in the past. I also have a fan back there that I have running. I have the dehumidifier over here. For any kind of hot season months, you are gonna want the dehumidifier and the fan. I also have a fan up here I'm gonna turn on when I'm done. So the vines are getting air circulation um, to the vines that are along the bottom and to the leaves that are along the top. It can get very hot up top there, and they get watered once a week via this, um, these irrigate, sorry, once a day via these irrigation tubes. Um, in, the sometime, in the summer, sometimes I have to do once every couple days as well. So hopefully that has helped you to learn how to lower the tomatoes, and I appreciate that you've watched this. Thanks, bye.